Good morning, I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Here are the stories we're following today. We begin with previously confidential documents related to Jeffrey Epstein now made public in federal court in New York. This follows a years-long battle over their release. The documents were part of a 2015 lawsuit against Epstein associate Ghislaine Maxwell, who's serving a 20-year sentence for sex trafficking. Bloomberg editor Tony Aaron says most of these documents have been seen, but there'd been redactions. A lot of people had thought there'd be some massive client list or a nice list of names that would be easy for everyone to follow. It wasn't anything like that. We've been getting about so far about 40 of what's probably going to be hundreds of documents. And in those, we've seen names like Bill Clinton, Prince Andrew of Britain, and a few others that are all very, very familiar. And Bloomberg's Tony Aaron says former President Clinton and President have denied knowing about or participating in Epstein's inappropriate conduct. Well, Nathan, ties to Epstein have led to career downfalls for former Barclays CEO Jess Staley and Apollo Global Management co-founder Leon Black. And they've tarnished reputations of other high-profile figures like Bill Gates and Leslie Wexner. They'll all have denied knowing about or participating in inappropriate conduct with Epstein. Virginia Jouffre is the Epstein victim who sued to have these documents released. Paul Pelletier is a former federal prosecutor who's been following the case. Part of the reason why Jeffrey Epstein Epstein was prosecuted in New York, or at least was indicted in New York, was because Virginia Giuffre would not stop. And former federal prosecutor Paul Pelletier was speaking there. Jeffrey Epstein was charged with sex trafficking in July 2019, but died by suicide in a Manhattan prison cell before he could stand trial. Okay, Karen, let's turn to politics in the U.S. Now, former President Donald Trump is now asking the Supreme Court to overturn the ruling in Colorado that has kicked him off that state's primary ballot. Bloomberg legal editor Eric Larson says this appeal has a number of possible outcomes. The court could rule, for example, that the Colorado Supreme Court didn't give Trump due process. That's another argument that Trump is making. He's also arguing that Section 3 of the 14th Amendment, which bars insurrectionists from holding office, uh, federal office, doesn't apply to the office of the presidency. And the Supreme Court could overturn that Colorado decision based only on those findings, if they wished, without weighing in on whether Trump was an insurrectionist. Bloomberg's Eric Larson says the former president faces many ongoing legal cases, but he is still the frontrunner for the Republican presidential nomination. Now, Nathan, to an issue that's expected to weigh heavily on voters' minds in the 2024 presidential election, immigration at the southern border. Republican House Speaker Mike Johnson is pushing for a GOP-only border bill. Democrats argue goes too far in securing the U.S. border with Mexico. Johnson led a GOP delegation to the border yesterday as Republicans look to pressure Democrats on border policy changes. The impasse over immigration has complicated congressional talks to avert a partial government shutdown later this month and puts more than $50 billion in military aid to Ukraine at risk should talks collapse. As for rising tensions in the Middle East, Karen, authorities in Iran say two deadly explosions in a central province are retaliation for its stance against Israel. The U.S. says it has nothing to do with the attacks. Bloomberg's Ed Baxter has the details. And it says neither did Israel. Iran is characterizing them as terror attacks. More than 100 people killed. The blast near the grave of Iranian Commander Soleimani. U.S. State Department quick to respond. Spokesman Matthew Miller. I do want to address some of the irresponsible claims that I have seen circulate and say that, number one, the United States was not involved in any way. And any suggestion to the contrary is ridiculous. And number two, we have no reason to believe that Israel was involved. Miller says it's in no one's interest to see the conflict escalate and note it comes a day after an attack in Beirut that killed an Iran-backed Hamas militant leader. Ed Baxter, Bloomberg Radio. All right, Ed, thank you. Well, separately, more than a dozen countries warned the Iran-backed Houthi group in Yemen against continuing their attacks on shipping in the Red Sea. The attacks have disrupted global commerce and triggered a buildup of Western naval power in the area. Sources say the U.S. and its allies are considering possible strikes against the Houthis amid concern that the maritime task force launched by Washington may not eliminate the threat to the vital waterway, which normally handles about 12 percent of global commerce. Let's turn now to the economy, Karen, and the release of the December Fed minutes. Officials expect rates to remain in restrictive territory for some time, but they acknowledge those rates have probably peaked. And Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin says a soft landing is not inevitable. I'd caution you to focus less on the rate path 
and more on the flight path. Is inflation continuing its descent? And is the broader economy continuing to fly smoothly? Conviction on both questions will determine the pace and timing of any change in rates. The Richmond Fed President Thomas Barkin also did not rule out a March interest rate cut. And in corporate news, Nathan's social media giant TikTok's looking to grow the size of its U.S. e-commerce business tenfold to as much as $17.5 billion this year. Bloomberg Tech reporter Alex Barinka says TikTok's ambitious target may pose a bigger threat to Amazon. Where TikTok is winning is on the fees they're imposing on merchants. They will be raising those fees to 6% in April, 8% in July. But those fees are still lower than Amazon seller fees. On TikTok, they're hoping that you're so engaged and entranced and have an emotional connection to the people who are posting these videos that you trust them when they say they like a product and that makes you want to buy it. And that's Bloomberg's Alex Barinka. Time now for a look at some of the other stories making news around the world. And for that, we're joined by Bloomberg's Amy Morris. Amy, good morning. Good morning, Karen. We're watching a winter storm that's expected to bring snow, rain and wind to the east this weekend. Bloomberg meteorologist Rob Carolyn has details. First significant storm of the season looks like it's headed towards the northeast and mid-Atlantic this weekend. Now, the major cities are probably going to be spared heavy snowfall due to the fact the ocean's still warm, and there'll probably be some mixing with rain in D.C., Baltimore, also in the New York and Boston area. But north and west of I-95, that's where heavier snowfall is likely and less mixing or no mixing at all. And that's going to result in probably a three to six inch snowfall, if not more, north and west of Boston, New York City and D.C. and Baltimore. The cities, though, D.C., Baltimore, New York, and Boston should only end up with about one to three inches, as it looks like right now. Now, if this does materialize, it would be the first measurable snow in two years for D.C., Baltimore, Philadelphia, and New York. A bomb threat emailed to officials in several states yesterday briefly disrupted government affairs and prompted some state capital evacuations, but the FBI quickly dismissed the threats as a hoax. Connecticut, Georgia, Hawaii, Kentucky, Maine, Michigan, Minnesota, Mississippi, and Montana, all of the some of the states that evacuated state houses or buildings. Kay Kirkpatrick is a state senator in Georgia. I'm not even sure what would motivate somebody to do something like that that could potentially result in loss of life. The FBI says it takes hoax threats very seriously, and that investigation is ongoing. We told you how Donald Trump's legal team is appealing a ruling by the main Democratic Secretary of State that he is ineligible to appear on the state's GOP primary ballot. Well, fellow GOP presidential candidates have called for that ban to be reversed, including former South Carolina Governor Nikki Haley, who says taking Trump off the ballot will lead to more problems. Don't open a door you can't close. And this is a dangerous door to open. And we need the Supreme Court to step in quickly before we have too many states do this. Still, Haley says she's not surprised to see Trump in a new legal struggle. Scientists say they've developed a new kind of antibiotic to treat dangerous bacteria resistant to most current medicines. The researchers from Harvard University and Hoffman LaRoche say the new antibiotic can effectively kill bacteria that cause serious lung, urinary tract and blood infections. Global News 24 hours a day whenever you want it with Bloomberg News Now. I'm Amy Morris, and this is Bloomberg. Karen. All right, Amy, thank you. Well, as Amy said, we do bring you the news throughout the day here on Bloomberg Radio. But now you can get the latest news on demand, and that means whenever you want it. Just subscribe to Bloomberg News Now. You can get the latest headlines at the click of a button. Get informed right on your schedule. You can listen and subscribe to Bloomberg News Now on the Bloomberg Business app, Bloomberg.com, plus Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcast. Time now for the Bloomberg Sports Update. Here's John Stashauer. John. Karen, the Lakers have hoisted a championship banner this season. They won that NBA in-season tournament, but overall, they're under 500. Lost at home to Miami, 110-96. Quiet night for LeBron James, only 12 points. He shot 6 of 18. The Lakers have lost three in a row, eight of their last 10. The Clippers, meanwhile, have won 13 of their last 15, 131-122 at Phoenix. Paul George scored 33 points. Kawhi Leonard scored 30. Luka Doncic went for 41. Dallas blew out Portland by 20. New Orleans won at Minnesota. That's the first two-game losing streak of the season. 
for the Timberwolves. Two top 25 teams played. They both lost. Number 23, Providence, beaten by Seton Hall. 16th ranked Clemson lost at Miami. It's week 18. A lot of the teams already knowing that they're going to the playoffs cannot move up in the seeding, so not surprisingly will not play their starting quarterback this weekend. No Lamar Jackson for the Ravens. will be replaced by Tyler Hunley. Joe Flacco will sit out for the Browns. It'll be Jeff Driscoll. No Patrick Mahomes for the Chiefs. Blaine Gabbert replaces him. Carson Wentz fills in for Matthew Stafford on the Rams. And the 49ers will go with Sam Darnold and sit out Brock Purdy, who's going to the Pro Bowl. The 49ers lead the way with nine Pro Bowl players, seven from the Cowboys and Ravens, six from the Dolphins and the Eagles. Trevor Lawrence will play for Jacksonville. The Jaguars with a win will win the AFC South. He missed last week's game. And Josh Allen's got the stinger, but he will play for the Bills in a big game at Miami. John Stash Hour, Bloomberg Sports. From coast to coast, from New York to San Francisco, Boston to Washington, D.C., nationwide on Sirius XM, the Bloomberg Business app, and Bloomberg.com. This is Bloomberg Daybreak. Good morning. I'm Nathan Hager on a morning of busy news flow. Jeffrey Epstein's ties to politics and Wall Street are back in the spotlight with the release of dozens of formerly sealed documents. Donald Trump is taking his fight to stay eligible to run in 2024 to the U.S. Supreme Court. And border politics could run up against Congress's effort to keep the government from starting to shut down. In a little more than two weeks, lots to discuss this morning. And here to do that with us now is Bloomberg News correspondent Bruce Einhorn. Bruce, thanks for being with us. Uh, Let's start off with the revelations, if any, that we got from these uh, documents that were in the uh, Jeffrey Epstein case. They've really been uh, a years long effort to get them out. Uh, Did they shed any new light on Jeffrey Epstein's crimes? Well, uh, so far, uh, there aren't too many surprises. So uh, these are the first of what are expected to be hundreds of documents um, identifying more than 150 people. Um, These are documents that had been filed and redacted um, as part of a 2015 lawsuit against uh, Ghislaine Maxwell. She, of course, was an associate of Jeffrey Epstein. She was convicted uh, in 2021 of participating in his crimes. He himself died in prison um, before he ever went to trial. Um, so uh, you know, there, some of the names that were in the unsealed documents, uh, including in- included former President Bill Clinton, uh, Prince Andrew of Britain. These are names that that um, had already been out there. Um, uh, uh, former President Trump, uh, not mentioned in these documents, but had been identified um, uh, in testimony in this case, um, uh, along with former President Clinton, um, as um, some of the people who had flown on uh, Jeffrey Epstein's plane. Um, uh, so there's maybe more news, more revelations, um, uh, as more of the documents are unsealed. But um, for now, uh, no big surprises. Yeah, a lot of people have been following this case. Bruce had been expecting or uh, speculating, at least, that there might be some kind of client list uh, that's been under seal in New York federal court. Do we have any indication at this point that such a list exists and could be unveiled at some point? Um, uh, it's possible. Um, uh, at the moment, um, uh, we don't uh, we don't know about a client list. No. Okay. Uh, Let's turn to uh, what might have been the other major uh, story. Otherwise, Uh, former President Trump taking his fight to stay on the ballot, at least in Colorado, uh, to the United States Supreme Court. This is a notable moment in the 2024 race. Uh, yes, and the, uh, the arguments that uh, former President Trump makes um, are interesting. He has a couple of different um, uh, arguments that he makes on why the Colorado Supreme Court erred. Um, first of all, he said that um, uh, one that it would uh, the move would unconstitutionally disenfranchise voters in Colorado. Um, and potentially disenfranchise voters elsewhere. He said that, uh, or his lawyers say that in, in the filing that that um, uh, insurrection uh, was understood uh, by the framers of the 14th Amendment uh, to mean something very specific. According to former President Trump's lawyers, um, it meant 
taking up arms and waging war against the United States. Um, and that's the way that the 14th Amendment should be read uh, now. Um, and therefore, uh, it doesn't uh, apply to him. This is his argument. Uh, he also argued that um, the 14th Amendment, which says very specifically that this uh, that an officer of the United States who um, uh, uh, engaged in an insurrection is ineligible, that that does not include president of the United States um, and therefore, again, um, shouldn't apply to him. Um, and then he also uh, uh, criticized the Supreme, the Colorado Supreme Court for relying on uh, evidence uh, from the January 4th Select Committee. Um, he said that uh, that's inadmissible. Um, and then also said that the insurrection clause in the 14th Amendment isn't self-executing. Um, this is an argument that that uh, uh, constitutional experts have been having um, about whether or not it is self-executing. That is to say that um, does Congress need to do anything, set up procedures for determining whether someone's violated, or um, can the court just make that decision itself? Only so these third. are all the arguments that Trump's making. And, right. um, you know, uh, next step is for, you know, to hear what the, the Supreme Court says. This is Bloomberg Daybreak Today, your morning brief on the stories making news from Wall Street to Washington and beyond. Look for us on your podcast feed at 6 a.m. Eastern each morning on Apple, Spotify, and anywhere else you get your podcasts. You can also listen live each morning starting at 5 a.m. Wall Street time on Bloomberg 1130 in New York, Bloomberg 991 in Washington, Bloomberg 1061 in Boston, and Bloomberg 960 in San Francisco. Our flagship New York station is also available on your Amazon Alexa devices. Just say Alexa, play Bloomberg 1130. Plus, listen coast to coast on the Bloomberg Business app, Sirius XM, the iHeartRadio app, and on Bloomberg.com. I'm Nathan Hager. And I'm Karen Moscow. Join us again tomorrow morning for all the news you need to start your day right here on Bloomberg Daybreak.